Hi. Um, so today I'm going to talk about creative ways to style figures and fig captions. I'm going to show you a few, or maybe you know, a more uh, more than a few, <laughs> different examples using what you might already know to help uh, inspire you and give you some ideas on how you can do things a little differently. So, as you know, I'm Georgie. I work at Campaign Monitor, uh, which is based in Sydney. And uh, you might wonder why I came all the way over here from Sydney. So, I'm in Perth because uh, not only do I want to share my knowledge with the people over here, but um, I really like this community. Uh, I first came here uh, to Perth for the first time in October last year for Mixing Conf, and I think I met a few of you there. Um, and since then, I've joined the Fenders Slack group, and I've gotten to know you guys um, a bit better. And I think you guys have also gotten to know me. <laughs> so one thing you might know about me is that I love blogging. Uh, I talk about it a lot. I share my blog on social media and. Um, it's something I've been doing for well over a decade. Uh, I really like to write. Um, I write about pretty much anything, so my blog's sort of nicheless, I guess. Um, I don't like to blog about anything specific because I feel like that restricts uh, what, like my creativity. Uh, so this is my blog. Feel free to visit it. You can tell that I love the colour aqua. I keep calling it teal, but I think it's somewhere between teal and aqua, maybe. So yeah, my blog is like my outlet, my little um, space to kind of get creative. And um, not that I don't love what I do at Campaign Monitor, but my blog is um, it's a place where I can do things sort of differently and do different things from what I do at work. So um, in this talk, um, it's not going to be really collaborative, but um, I'm going to give you maybe a bit of inspiration and from what, I, from what you see, you might get ideas amongst yourselves and we can be creative together. So um, I think most of you know uh, HTML, the language used to build web pages. And I'm going to talk about the figure element, which is pretty new. Uh, it's uh, typically used for uh, one image as well as multiple images. And it wraps uh, around the images uh, something like this. And here's an example of uh, multiple images inside the figure element. So the figure element represents self-contained content. So it's kind of like an item, uh, a, little, a little piece that stands, uh, that's like yeah, self-contained. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's independent and stands by itself. Uh, I mean, that it doesn't mean that it's, uh, it makes sense by itself. Uh, the position in the document flow is not important. So if you think about an encyclopedia or a math textbook, sometimes there are diagrams in the corner or down the bottom, and they don't really flow along with what you read on the page. And sometimes uh, the copy might say, see figure one, see figure A, something like that. So that's the way I like to uh, understand at first how, how, how figures work. So they're referenced from the content, but they're not a part of it. So you, won't, you shouldn't be using figure when uh, you've got text like see the image below or see the image to the left, because that means that if you were to move the figure, it, the copy would no longer make sense. Interestingly enough, although you use figures for images, they can also be used for block quotes, code blocks, uh, even poem excerpts, videos, audio clips, and advertisements. So this is an example of it being used with a block of code, or a quote, or perhaps a shorter, sorry, yeah, shorter quote. Can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Um, do you know if, the, uh, if Susie um, will readjust anything on, on your positioning of your images within a figure tag? Uh, I'm not familiar with Susie. Um, uh, that was the first question that popped in my head when I saw the code. So, so sorry, I'll, I was... I'll, I'll, I'll explore it myself. Yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> uh, so figures can have a big caption inside, like this. Sorry. <laughs> 
Um, and they can be grouped or nested inside of each other like this. So in more detail about fig caption, it can only be used it can only be used inside a figure element, obviously. And obviously, it represents a caption or a legend for the figure it is in. Uh, one rule is that it must be the first or last child of the figure. And it also allows flow content such as uh, H1, P, and span. So if you want to make uh, your captions more semantic, uh, you can do it in a way such as this. And so captions, you might think of them as being pretty short, but they can also be quite descriptive and long if you're describing like a group of people. For example, we took a photo of people in this room and wanted to maybe name everyone. A bit too many people, but yeah. So uh, you also don't have to include the caption. It just means that your whatever's inside the figure will not have a caption of any sort. So let's look at some websites. Uh, who's heard of Medium? Yeah, OK. Uh, Medium, if you don't know, is a publishing platform, and this is an article that was published on Medium. And I'm just showing an example of the image that is being used in this particular article. And this is an example of where you might use the figure element. And if you inspect the code that um, that's on this page, Medium does use the figure element, which is good. So this particular uh, image doesn't have a caption, but for one that does, they actually do use big caption and figure, which is cool to see. But if we take an example like Bloomberg, which is a news website, you can see a lot of stuff going on on the page. And you might not, at first, you might not think that you can use a figure or fig caption anywhere, but have a look at one of the, sorry, have a look at one of the news cards or tiles or whatever you might call it, you can actually make this a figure as well because the figure will be the, inside the figure you'll have the image which is the thumbnail and you also have the headline which can serve as the caption. Now this is an interesting one that I haven't seen a lot of discussion on in my research, um, but Etsy and other uh, online stores like eBay, uh, where you might have a store listing. So on the home page here, you've got recently viewed. You might not think of this at first either, but each of these could be a figure and a fig caption. Considering you can have flow content inside a figure and fig caption, you can have this entire block as a figure with the thumbnail inside and all that product metadata can be the fig caption. So with that said, uh, I'm not going to show too much more code because this is about creative creativity. So this is the fun part. Also, this is my favorite emoji since it came out in the new iOS. It just looks so chill. <laughs> okay, this um, in, in these examples, I'm going to use photos that I've taken because I like to do that. <laughs> and also use a copy that's from actual blog posts that I've written because, um, well, I like blogging and a lot of the photos I have are, there are relevant uh, blog posts so I'm trying to show as much like context as possible. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so this is a photo of um, the uh, Brisbane band Hey Dronmo playing in a record store, which I think was about a year ago. Okay, no, uh, this is a really fun part. That was actually just showing you what a uh, figure and fit caption looks like by default. So with uh, this one, all I've done is put a border around it, but already it looks uh, more interesting. And uh, that's number one. Now all these are going to be really incremental, really small, but you can see how with just a little bit of CSS, a little bit of styling, you can get like a really different look. So um, most, uh, I'll let you know if the HTML has changed, but for the next one, it hasn't. Um, only the CSS has changed. So I've removed the border and I've put a border radius around the image to make it a bit more interesting and the caption is italicized. And I haven't changed the font or anything, but we'll get to that. Uh, here's another one, a bit more like Polaroid style, I guess you'd call. Um, there's a border around the whole figure 
and uh, there's a background inside there. And there's a little bit of padding around the image for a bit of breathing room. And I've left the uh, caption in the same style and I've actually just centered it. Another one, um, this is uh, one that I did, I first did quite uh, about a year ago and I thought it was quite interesting to just have the caption with a background but sort of attached to the bottom of the picture. And I've just changed the <coughs> font for, uh, to keep it a little bit interesting. Here's another one where I've changed the font again and I've put a bit of a border down the bottom and uh, made the corners a little bit around. Now you might have a longer caption on, uh, so this is what I was saying earlier, it's not always just a short caption, but sometimes you might put more detail uh, in describing what is in the photograph. So I'll put a bit more detail on this one. And because it's long, you can kind of do a lot more with it. So uh, I've reduced the width here because sometimes it's really hard to read text when it's on a lot of, when it's on a really long line. And just for a little bit of interest, I've added a bit of a divider between the image and the caption. This one is uh, just a bit of a change to give it maybe a more modern look with a bolder divider. And uh, I thought it might be interesting to use a different picture, because you're probably sick of seeing the same band. Uh, this is a photo I took of Blur uh, a while back in Sydney. Uh, well, Graham Coxon from Blur, anyway. Um, and this, I just wanted to show what it looks like with a portrait image and a line to the right. And I think it would be a lot more interesting if this was floated amongst the text, like this. And uh, I'm gonna move on to a travel picture. Does anyone like traveling? Yeah, okay, so I'm, I'm trying to put a variety of images here so you're not seeing the same thing. And so notice how I haven't changed the body copy because I want you to see how the image and the caption sits amongst it all. So I've gone back to just a really short, simple caption and uh, changed the font as well. Now, if you're familiar with Medium, which you are, you might notice that they have a particular style with their images where they... Uh, where the image sort of bleeds out and has a negative margin against the content. And so that's what I've done with this example. This is what I've done on my blog because I just liked it. Uh, this is, I thought it kind of makes the image stand out. Now you could do an overlay. So instead of the caption just sitting under the image, you could uh, let it lie on top. And this has a background that's translucent. If you have a longer caption, might want to do something a little bit different. Uh, added a lot of extra padding around the caption to make that stand out. And it doesn't always have to be at the bottom of the image or near the bottom. You can move it to the top if you like. So this is positioned absolutely in the top left corner. This might not work for all images because it might depend on what's, what's in your image and you don't want to cover anything up. Um, this is a similar one, just adding a border. I don't really like this one that much, but I thought I'd put it there so you can see what you can do. You move it to the other side, change the font again, and there are many different fonts out there, and it really depends on your design, what you're doing. You can do so much already with what I've shown you. You can do something different here, it's a circle. Um, this one's a fixed circle with a fixed width, so it kind of, it's, I haven't made it fluid, but, uh, it depends how, how much uh, text you've got in your caption, whether you want to do this or not. And so this is over, uh, just like overlapping in the bottom corner, but you can move it on top of the image if you like. Uh, and if you still want to see part of the image behind it, it will be translucent. Yes, question? Do you have any like, code samples for all these different... Yes, I do, and I will post them online tonight and uh, I'll share it on Twitter or post it on the Meetup page. Um, but yeah. Yep. I assume that's a 50% radius. It is, yeah. yes, border radius 50%. I actually only learned that quite recently when someone told me because I kept doing border radius 10,000 pixels. <laughs> yeah, so that's a good one, a good takeaway. Um, I like this one because it kind of looks a bit like a postcard or it looks like something in those, you know, DK eyewitness travel books. 
you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm um, going to move on to a different picture. So this is uh, in Paris. And I've done something a little bit different here. So what I've done is use Flexbox so that the image and caption are next to each other. Um, and I've used... Uh, I forget. Because <laughs> someone help me out. Uh, you know, when you uh, flex start, you align the... Flex the line? Align items. I think it's align items for vertical, right? Yeah. yeah. Just, Just for like content? content. <laughs> it's one of yeah. But it's in the code. So, and this, yeah, I mean, I've got, all, I've got all the code and I'll put it up uh, online so you guys can have a look. But um, again, what I'm saying is visually this is different, but you only have to use a few lines of CSS to make these kinds of changes. Uh, and to make this more interesting, I've put a border up the top. You can do whatever you want, really. You can put a border around the whole thing. Um, you can uh, t uh, align it in the middle or the bottom. And you can add some interest with border on the left, uh, left of the caption. You can put it wherever you want. It depends on, again, depends on your design, what you're doing. And this one, it's pretty much the same thing. I've just uh, borrowed that mediums, uh, medium style of doing the negative margins on the left and right. And just to add more interesting white space, I've aligned the caption to the right. So this is another photo. I didn't take this one because I'm in it. Um, this is in uh, Verena. And I uh, swap uh, without changing the HTML and the fact that the caption is after the image, I've used flex direction row reverse to reverse the two elements so that the caption is on the left of the image. So if you've got um, a website already built and you've got all your captions at the end of the, as the last child after your um, image or you know, your quote, whatever it might be, uh, remember that you can use Flexbox to simply change the direction you have to go. You don't have to go in and change the HTML of every single, uh, every single thing you've done. Uh, this is another one where I've chosen to put a border around the image and just leave the caption off to the left. Now this might look interesting if it was bloated. And so more Flexbox stuff where I've reversed the direction of the uh, elements so that the caption is before the image. So again, I didn't have to change any HTML here, just had to add some more CSS. Now, something that is probably a little bit, um, well, something you might not have thought of, oops, is styling the first line. And I think this, um, I got this inspiration sort of from magazines and newspapers, or more so magazines, which style um, images uh, that are kind of floated amongst the text and the, they, style, they tend to style the captions where there's a bit of an accent on the first letter, like a drop cap, or on, uh, there's a bit of a there's bold on the first line. So that's what I've done here where I've made the first line bigger in font size. And you can do the same, uh, I've done font font variant, small caps. <laughs> it's very weird talking about like CSS without actually seeing the code and like actually verbally uh, talking about it. Yeah. Um, so I've also, uh, so this is just on the first line, I've also um, spread it, I've also justified the text, which I mean, it may not always be desirable, but if you have uh, a small caption, it's still gonna be like pretty easy to read. Uh, this is one that doesn't look as good. It kind of depends on what you what's in your caption, but having the caption a lot skinnier than the image can add a little bit of interest. And here's one where if you had a layout that has like a lot of white space on the left or a margin, you can put the captions such that they are they fall in that margin, and that kind of makes it a little bit interesting. So. Yeah, uh, here's another example, a uh, similar sort of thing, but I've styled the first letter, not much. And here's another one where I've kind of, you could probably do this better than me, but you can, you know, indent or, you know, change the indentation 
of the first line to keep things a little bit interesting as well. So moving on to another image. So I chose an image that was small because sometimes you might have an image that's like tiny. And you could keep it interesting by having the caption really large depending on how long or how short it is. I thought that this, in, this is an example where it looks good is where it, it's pretty narrow and it's down the side of the page. So I've gone through a lot of images, but as I mentioned, you can, you can use this, you can use figure for block quotes and quotes and code and things. So I decided to show a couple of examples using a block quote. Uh, so yeah, the, you can do something like this. It doesn't have to be floated. I've got another example where it is floated and there's a border. Um, another one floated on the other side where I've kind of, you know, gone back to our little maths uh, textbook example and labeled this thing with figure one. So that the caption for this is actually that part at the bottom that says uh, figure one. Or you can let it um, just take the full width page, it doesn't have to float. Another example, this is of a kind of a longer quote, but I thought it'd be interesting to put a border on the left of that. And this is just a fun one because I haven't shown enough. <laughs> um, if you have multiple images, you can do something interesting. They don't all have to look the same. Uh, I've done, I've styled the first one so that it looks different, it's bigger and I've done a caption for all of those images. So I've shown you 42 different examples of how to style figures and fig captions. There's probably a lot more. Um, there's definitely a lot more and you probably thought of some while, while I'm standing here and, and while you were listening. So you're really only limited by your imagination. And I hope that uh, in seeing some of what I've shown you today, you've become inspired to do something similar uh, in your work. And next time you uh, are designing something, you might think of using figures and fig captions more. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you so much for having me and for your time. Thanks. <laughs>